with thanksgiving. Let's enter his courts with praise. We come to worship the Lord today. We come to magnify his name. Isn't your God worthy of it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God, let's make a joyful noise as we sing a new song to him. Hallelujah. and sisters what a great blessing it is for us to be together once again in the worship and praise of our almighty God we thank God that you've tuned in today to join with us the virtual worship celebration of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of West Palm Beach Florida you're in the right place 
at the right time god's got an amazing blessing in store for your life on this day in this worship service in fact one of the greatest blessings that is afforded unto all of us is the blessing and the privilege of returning unto the lord out of that which he has entrusted unto us by way of our tithes and by way of our offerings and before we go into our time of giving let me just take a point of personal pastoral privilege and say a resounding thank you to all of you uh, that sold into my life uh, sold into my family uh, for christmas uh, it is not obligatory on anyone's part uh, but you are exceptionally, extraordinarily kind, and you're particularly kind to me. And I wanted to simply say thank God for you, and I am so grateful uh, for your kindness. Let's prepare our hearts now to worship God by releasing our tithes and contributing our offerings, good seed into this good soil. And let me tell you a couple of things happen. One you join with us you partner with us you undergird us uh, as we uh, execute and carry out the will of god in the earth realm you help ministry happen on behalf of the lord uh, unto his people and then secondly you align yourself with the will of god uh, we know so many scriptures so many verses that speak to us about giving and all we require or request of you is that we simply align ourselves with the word of God that we come with a pure heart pure motives pure hands as we approach the Lord in worship God loves a cheerful giver and I want you to be an absolute cheerful giver as you worship God by way of our giving so let's go on to the Lord now in prayer father for the privilege of releasing tithes and offerings into your storehouse we are so grateful thank you for these moments oh god that we come the solemnity with which we approach you now as we deposit into your kingdom god we ask in Jesus' holy name that you bless every gift bless and sanctify every giver we pray in the marvelous matchless magnificent name of jesus who is the christ we pray and all the people of the lord say amen amen and amen let's give right now in the house of the lord well my beloved brothers and sisters let's attune our hearts and our minds unto the word of the lord there is a word that goes upon our heart out of the word of the Lord today. Let me invite your attention to the Lord's gospel as recorded by Matthew chapter five. We'll begin our reading at verse one and conclude with verse 12. Herein reads the word of God from the King James translation of scripture. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God, children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad. 
For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. May the blessings of the Lord be upon the reading and the hearing of his holy and righteous word that we may, may be strengthened, uplifted, and edified thereby. Let us pray. Into your presence, our Father, we come once again. There's a great place to be. For in your presence is the fullness of joy. We come, O oh God, to exalt you, to lift your holy and righteous name to the lofty place, highly exalted above all other names given among men and even given beyond the earth. We pause, O oh God, now to pray for the presence of your anointing. Anoint the hearts, the minds of these, your people, to be the fertile receptive grounds to hear, heed, and obey and respond to the proclamation of the good news. God, I pray that this message today will be pragmatically useful, that it will be vocally audible, that it will be technologically superior, that it will be Christologically centered, homiletically structured, and hermeneutically sound. Our oh, Father, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my tongue. Holy Ghost, thank you for inclusion in your ministry. I give you all I got. I pray that you take it and do with it what you will. I trust you, Lord, as I rely upon you. Have your way, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. On well, last year, I preached from this text, portions of it. In the midst of that particular message, we captured the concept of the Christ engaged in the pragmatic process that we so often find Jesus in as he masterfully models for us as he presents a perfect pattern for us, as he gives an excellent example for us of what I classify as a strategy or stratagem for the purpose of multiplication of ministry. It, it's necessary, beloved brothers and sisters, for us to understand that as Jesus executed and carried out the will of the Father in the earth realm. One of the amazing and yet I find intriguing statements that he made as it pertains and relates to the work that he did and performed when he walked upon the face of the earth, Jesus the incarnate, he made this statement and said, greater works than these shall ye do because I go unto the Father. And herein we find that he teaches us that in terms of the works of God being implemented and executed in the earth realm, that they would not be greater qualitatively but that they should be greater quantitatively because he has duplicated himself in the disciples, but he employs and infuses this strategy to multiply ministry throughout masses and the multitudes. There is the gathering of a crowd, the Christ pulls away into a mountain and when he was set, the Bible says that his disciples, 
came unto him. And then the Christ opened his mouth and taught them, saying the things that are found within this text. Foundationally, and by way of introduction, we have suggested that what Jesus began to do was to impart into the disciples that which was instructional, intentional, and inspirational. In fact, the text is tell it to teach us that there are some attributes placed on exhibition and display that can posture any person who happens to be in Christ but exhibits either of these enumerated attributes that they can be postured for their lives to be the recipients of blessedness or blessings that God has earmarked for his own. You just read it with me. He talks about the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, the hunger, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. In fact, what, what I surmised from this particular text and how it progresses for our edification is that Jesus is teaching that if a person has an issue that is identifiable, that that can potentially posture them for one of the enumerated blessings that are lifted within this text. For example, if life reveals that you are hurt, that you're hungry, that you're helpless, or that you are perhaps hounded for righteousness sake. The, the text is implying that you may be a candidate that is in store for one of the enumerated blessings that Christ has talked about within this text. Then he simply turns the focus away from the masses and multitudes unto those disciples, the creme de la creme, those who make up the in crowd, the inner circle. He looks upon them and gazes into their eyes apparently and he points out to them that there are some exclusive qualifying benefits that they in particular may receive if his will is both incorporated and consistently carried out and executed within their lives. Listen, if you will, to the language that has been discovered in the 11th and 12th verse, Jesus says, blessed to you when they revile and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you may i parenthetically raise for your contemplation and consideration this question that seeks to point directly at the heart of the dis disciples directly at the heart of those who have made christ the centerpiece of their life, those who embrace Jesus as the center of their joy, is this the kind of blessing that you really want to qualify for? I want to I want to argue, I want to add, I want to insert and suggest that there are that there is a specific level or there is a particular state state of mind, state of being, state of presence that is inevitable, unavoidable, and unalterable for those who are equippers and those who qualify for what I classify as this secondary level of blessedness. Blessed are you 
when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. That's what Jesus said. He employs uh, linguistic precision when he pointedly says, when men shall revile you. Cambridge English Dictionary describes revile as to criticize someone strongly, to say unpleasant things about someone. The King James Dictionary says to revile means to abuse, to attack someone with evil, wicked, sinister, and nefarious words and verbiage. In fact, the enlargement of the definition of this term is in order that you and I can gain comprehension in a very precise and accurate manner is to suggest that uh, when some, someone is reviled, it, it, it means that it's not that they are the object of an individual disdain or dislike, but to the contrary, there is concentric uh, consensus of a community corporately, people of like minds, people of kindred spirits, who are all in agreement that whatever it is, or perhaps whomever it is, that they abhor it, that they hate it, they categorically reject it, and they, 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 they name it, they put their mouth on it, they speak negatively about it. When men shall revile you, now may I ask you again, do you really, as a disciple of Christ, wanna, wanna qualify for this layer or level of blessedness potentially within your life? Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to make uh, the commitment? Are you willing to posture and present yourself on a path that potentially can cause you to experience and have to undergo this level of punition from, from the world? It would appear to me that when I hear the words of Christ, as they seem to fall from his lips, like pollen falls off of a shaken lily, that Jesus is saying that in order to qualify for this particular state or status or potential blessedness, that uh, you gotta do something, you've gotta exhibit something, you've gotta incorporate something into the strategy of your life, your priorities, your plans, your purposes, your intent, must create conditions that attract unto you the maniacal menacing of the masses. He's saying if you want this kind of blessedness to be yours, that you gotta be an agitator and not a placator, that you gotta be a shipmate on a battleship for Christ, not a teammate on the love boat for the world. What is offered within the text is that there's gotta be some level of perceived radical aspect to your nature that is based upon the fact that the standards of the world say one thing, but, 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 but the priorities of your life say something different because you stand for Christ, they stand against Christ. They, they, they won't like you. <laughs> They're not gonna sing your praise. They're not gonna embrace you. They're not gonna desire your fellowship. It's going to be costly. Brothers and sisters, it's interesting because this particular text seems to suggest that your behavior, your actions, your attitude, your commitments will cause you to have a target or a bullseye upon your life and, and that which targets you will be all of that which is adversarial to the cause of Christ. The venom, the 
veracity, the atrocities, the, the hatred, you'll attract it. You'll attract opposition, you will attract it. You'll, you'll attract adversity, you will attract it. You'll attract their hostility. There's implications found inherent within the text. The Bible seems to suggest that when you attract it, that you won't deserve it. But, but if you really want to be qualified for the state of blessedness, while it will be unfair unto you, while you won't deserve it, but you will proudly and you will boldly demonstrate and declare that you feel and find that because of your commitment to the call of Christ that you've earned it. It's going to rise up against you. It's not, it's not going to be tasteful. It's not going to be desirable. It's not going to be welcoming. It's, 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 it's going to be dangerous. It's going to be damaging. It can be detrimental unto you. In fact, close scrutiny and perusal of the passage, when we look into the text within its context, something seemed to leap out from this pericope on the page when it seems to suggest that what they will say about you in opposition to you will be unfounded. Yes, spread stuff about you, that ain't true. It will be false, it'll be untrue, it'll be fallacious, it'll be flawed. In fact, buzzword of the day seems to capture the concept, it will be fake news about you. It'll be inaccurate about you. It'll be incorrect about you. Therefore, Whatever they say, the word on the street about you, if you want to qualify for this layer and level of blessedness, is that it will be invalid about you as a child of the Most High God. Nevertheless, I, I got to be, I got to be true to the text, and the text seems to teach us a theme. And don't you miss this? Because if what they say about you in opposition to you is true, then it don't count in terms of the qualification stratagem employed by Christ for you to get to this layer and level of blessedness. So don't let it be true what they say about you. And if it is true, then May I suggest unto you, my beloved brothers and sisters, that you first of all confess it, and that you secondly repent of it, and that you get yourself right in standing with and before all Almighty God. Because I learned something, that no matter how nasty, no matter how dark, no matter how despicable, no matter how damnable it is, no matter how damaging and how hurtful it might happen to be in your life, when it's all said and done, I got some good news for you. Ah, that God will, in fact, because he locks himself in within this text, to a predetermined response to the set of circumstances, not only that he will, but that God must eventually uh, vindicate you. He'll validate you. You ain't got to do it yourself. You won't have to stress out your own human flesh. It will become God's issue. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. It, it'll become his issue. But, but, but in order that I be true to the text, I, I need you to understand, beloved brothers and sisters, that you must be willing, if you want this layer of blessedness to be yours, you must be willing to endure. There's a text in the New Testament that says endure hardness as, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, 
I came to tell somebody that you got to be willing to go through it. You got to be willing to endure it. You got to be willing to take it. Ah, one of the saddest sets of circumstances that could ever be labeled and placed as a yoke around the neck of a believer is that you came so far, but you got to a place, you got to a level, you got to a point in your walk, in your journey, in your sojourn until you got to a place that you didn't push through and you became disqualified. So my suggestion unto you uh, see it through. Don't, don't let it cause you to become disqualified. You could, don't, don't allow them, whoever the proverbial them happen to be in your life, in your concentric circle of content, don't let them cause you pull you, push you, lull you to a place where you become disqualified. The atmosphere is set. It's structured. And it often, in the midst of its structure, it provides something and presents it unto you almost like temptation. Because it, it does appear, seem, and I dare say because with flesh, sometimes it even feels desirable, tasteful, welcoming and inviting for us to do those things that can contribute to or cause us to end up being Disqualified. What, what, what can cause it? What can cause your disqualification? What, what can make you get to a, a certain layer, a certain place, a certain level, a certain uh, point, and then all of a sudden something gets introduced into your life, and here you are prematurely uh, uh, aborted, in your purpose, don't do it. Well, help me, preacher. Bishop, help me to understand and to comprehend what is it that life can throw in my direction that can cause me to get disqualified from this state of blessedness. There's a couple of things. Here's number one. Don't collaborate. <laughs> nor collude with it, nor with them. Don't compromise or sell yourself or the standards of Christ short because of the pleasure. Don't do it. Don't, don't allow the corrosion and the contamination to, 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 to infiltrate into the space of your mind, your heart, your motives until Corruption becomes the order of the day rather than that which is pure and holy. You got to understand, brothers and sisters, that you got to pay the price. That you you got to you got to recognize that 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 you got to see that the atmosphere has not been set for your comfort. No. It's not been ordered, arranged, and, and systematically put in place uh, for things to be uh, at ease in your mind, in your heart, and in your spirit. You got to see it for what it is. You got to call it out. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you want this state, a blessedness to be yours. That when you see this atmosphere, you got to have a made up mind that I will not, I will not contend with it, but rather I will condemn it. 
So, my brothers and my sisters, as a close, let me tell you, my counsel to you is this. If you want to get to the place in your life where Christ will be able to make an impact and leave an impression upon you that you decide that you're going to make it your consuming ambition that the call and the cost of Christ is what I desire within my life, then I want to suggest unto you that you stand tall. Hallelujah. <laughs> when living, lowering, or maybe even going low might be popular. Yeah. You got to make up your mind and declare that no matter what happens around me, that I'm going to stand my ground. And brothers and sisters, here it is. What Christ is suggesting is a concept that you ought to catch. But when you catch it, you got to make sure that you can comprehend it. And when you comprehend it, you got to make sure that you can weave it into the fabric of your own faith. Make sure that it becomes a part of the practical side of the practices of your life so that you make up your mind that no matter how strong, thank you, Jesus, no matter how strong, how powerful, how potent my adversaries may be, no matter how dark, no matter how dismal, no matter how difficult the adversities and atrocities that may happen to creep up within my life may get even. Lord God, if they start out at one level, don't you understand that this enemy of ours, in fact, the very enemy of God, he always employs the same strategy. He's predictable. T tell your neighbor, he is predictable. He'll start out one way. He'll start out at one level. But you better believe me when I tell you that the devil will not leave you alone by simply giving you one level. No, but he'll increase. <laughs> the intensity of the atrocity. He will increase uh, the potency of the pain. He will turn up the volume. <laughs> uh, my brothers and sisters, he'll t intensify it. He will increase it. <laughs> he will amplify it. <laughs> the devil will magnify it. <laughs> oh, but you gotta have. You better have a heart that is fixed. You better have a mind that is sure enough made up. That no matter what happens on my periphery, no matter what bombs might be bursting in my atmosphere, no matter what might be happening in the community, the buzz all about my name. They may talk about you. <laughs> they may even scandalize your name. But you make up within your mind <laughs> that it doesn't matter unto me <laughs> the things that are happening around me <laughs> because greater is he <laughs> that is on the inside of me than she <laughs> that is in the world. <laughs> So then, my brothers and sisters, you make up your mind <laughs> that I'm going to stick with God, <laughs> that I'm going to stand with God, <laughs> that I'm going to stay with God. <laughs> no matter what happens in my life, <laughs> I'm going to stay on the field. <laughs> no matter what happens in the community, <laughs> I'm not abandoning the church. I'm not abandoning my Christ. I'm not abandoning my call. I'm in this to win this. And I'm made up within my mind. And I'm going to stick with what Jesus has already placed in motion. It doesn't matter what the extremities are. Doesn't matter what the polarities are. It may be extreme pain. It may be extreme pleasure. But no matter come what may, 
I made up within my mind <laughs> that Jesus, uh, the matchless lamb of God, he comes with this blessedness. And then he gives you two promises. I'm going to give them to you and then we're finished. First of all, he says that you rejoice in heaven and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward your reward in heaven my brothers and my sisters jesus is saying unto you jesus is saying unto me that you will be blessed that you will be better that you will be bountiful but there is a caveat that it's not just only <laughs> within this world, but Jesus got some blessedness that'll transform, that'll transcend everything that you can find in the world. I like that about Jesus, uh, that he lets me understand that no matter how much I get good in my world. I get good in this life. He's got something, something beyond this life, something beyond the taste that has been most fulfilling, something beyond the level that seems to have been the maximum. He's got something beyond the clouds. Beyond the Earth's atmosphere, beyond the stratosphere, beyond the troposphere, beyond the exosphere, somewhere around the clouds, somewhere where the four and twenty elders have gathered around the throne, they're crying, holy, holy, be the Lord God Almighty. God is saying unto you that great is your reward, your reward in heaven. You can't get that reward if you don't make it to heaven. So my suggestion unto you is as you examine your life, make sure that you've been born again. Make sure that you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Make sure that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I got to be through here now. He promised better is in store, better beyond the clouds. Your reward is going to be in heaven. But wait a minute. Not only did he promise your reward in heaven, but he promised that you got to remember don't you ever forget that everything everything that you suffer everything everything that you endure everything that you got to go through you're not the only one you're not the first one come here bible reader she says it right in the word. I heard him say that they persecuted the prophets that came before you. Somebody felt it before you. Somebody paid the price. Somebody had to endure before it came your way. So make up within your mind that I am, I'm ready, that I am, I'm willing, I'm ready to go through it because of Christ. So be not dismayed, whatever be tired, God will, God will, he'll take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will, he'll take care of you. So then, my brothers and sisters, I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt 
sin breakers that you trying to conquer my soul but i heard have you heard anything i heard did you hear that voice i heard the voice of jesus saying still fight on he promised he promised jesus promised he promised never to leave you nor to let you walk alone so brothers and sisters make up your mind i am gonna stick i'm gonna stand i'm gonna stay but while i go through while i endure i'll wait until my change comes i'll work while daytime is here because nighttime is on the horizon where the children of god will no longer be able you won't be able to work you won't be able to pray you won't be able to stand but in the meantime which may be a lean time i made up within my mind i'll square my shoulders stand still raise my hand lift up my voice i'll praise him i'll worship him through my hard times through my pain through my difficulty put your hands together and give his name some praise why don't you magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name his name his name ah oh, his name oh yes 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 is worth it. Somebody under the sound of my voice right now, you're struggling. Your eyes about to well up with tears because it's been hurt. You've been straining. You've been wanting to throw in the towel. You've been wondering and questioning and asking yourself, is it all worth it? I got some good news for you. You're paying the price. Absorbing the cost of what Christ has identified for you as the qualifiers for this secondary level of blessings blessedness oh i know it's easy to quit i know sometimes it's convenient to quit sometimes it's even comfortable throw up your hands and just turn around and walk away but don't you do it I speak life into you. I speak strength into you. I speak spiritual stamina into your life. Even now in the blessed name of Jesus, I speak it. I decree it for you. You shall be strong. You shall endure. You are embraced by the sufficient and strong hands of God. It doesn't matter how many times you failed and faltered. It doesn't matter how many flaws there are, how many blemishes. It doesn't matter how many hangups. Jesus was hung up for our hangups. You be strong and courageous. He'll strengthen your heart.
he'll give you what he promised. Father, I speak now blessings over your people. That man on his couch, that, that woman that's sitting at the computer, the brother that has opened up the iPad, those that are listening, oh God, even now that hear your voice by way of a smart device, I decree by the authority that you vested in your servant, I decree that they shall be strong, that they shall endure. I speak life, strength, endurance, patience, perseverance. Let it happen, God. Seal them now by the power and presence of your spirit, I ask in Jesus' name. Listen, if this is your word, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you that God spoke to your heart. It's the Genesis of 2022. And God's giving you a clean slate, a fresh start. Seize the moment, saint. Yeah, I know sometimes it's so easy to look around and say, you know, these other people, they got all of this and they're doing that and they got titles and positions. But let me tell you something. God's got a work for you. God's got an assignment for your life. God's got purpose ordained for you. And he will accompany that purpose, that assignment with a state of blessedness. It'll be worth it. Listen, one thing I know for sure, these principles will not be applicable they will not be practical. They will not work for you. If you fail to open up your heart and receive Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and as your Savior, I implore you now, if that's your need, to just whisper a little prayer and say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. Just pray a little prayer and say, Lord, I repent of my sins and I mean it. I confess all of them, God. I agree that wrong is just wrong in your sight. And ask him to come into your heart as Savior and establish a right relationship with him. Do that now. Do it now. Now listen, if you are part of this worship experience and you're not under spiritual covering, you're not in connection with a local church, which is the visible expression of the body of Christ, connect with us. Let us hear from you. Drop us a note. Give us a call. An email. Whatever means necessary. Let us hear from you. To know that you desire to have right relationship with the local church. We'll embrace you. We'll pray with you. We'll grow with you. We'll study with you. We'll worship with you. We'll embrace you and hold on to you in the times when you need it most. Thank you, Lord. Let's prepare our hearts now to do that which the Lord has required of us to share in the observance of the Lord's Supper, the ordinance of the church. Get your elements ready. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare now uh, to execute this ordinance which Christ has required of us, the observers of the Lord's Supper, 
The Bible says that Jesus took bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it unto his disciples, and he said unto them, this is my body which is broken for you. Likewise, the word of the Lord says, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it unto them and said, this is the blood of the New Testament, my blood which is shed for you for the remission of your sins or the sending away of your sins. And he said to them to drink all of it. He cautioned and admonished the disciples in that house. He said, don't eat of my body nor drink of my blood unworthily for whosoever does such eateth and drinketh damnation to one's soul. But we as Bible readers understand our righteousness is not our innate righteousness, but it's the imputed and imparted righteousness that we receive through faith in Jesus Christ. Let's go now unto the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for these moments. They are sacred. The solemnity of these moments lift your name to a high exalted place above all other names upon and beyond the earth we glorify you now bless O oh lord these elements but we also ask that you bless every proper subject the heart of every man woman boy or girl that is a proper subject to receive and partake do so now we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness as we come now to do that which you have required of us it's in Jesus' name that we pray every heart say amen amen and amen this is my body which is broken for you says the Lord take ye and eat and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving This is my blood for the remission of your sins. Take ye and drink all of it, says the Lord. The Bible teaches us that when they finished showering at the Lord's Supper, they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. We are not going to the Mount of Olives. We're going to our homes, our schools, our jobs, the places where we socialize and as we go we take the abiding illuminating presence of the spirit of almighty god allow him to emanate through our persona and to make an impact and leave a positive godly impression upon the lives of all those that we come into contact with so remain for just a few moments some very crucial announcements are about to be made. Some exciting things are on the horizon for this ministry and for your life. Thank you to all of our visiting partners that joined with us and tuned in. Perhaps God is leading you to become a part of this forever fantastic family of faith. We'll receive you. Stay tuned.